Archaeologist Dr. Martin Bomas has been digging in southern Egypt for nearly 30 years. More than anyone, he knows that beneath the sand and rubble here, there are still many tombs to find. This is your first day here. It is. Congratulations. Very much. Martin's starting a new three week dig season, and he's brought his biggest team ever, including archaeology students, trainee lecturers, a leading pottery expert, and 22 all-important diggers. You've got hundreds of tons of sand in a great arc round here. How on earth did you decide where you wanted to put your energy for the next few weeks? So our focus for our excavation period this time is just the hill in front of us, you know, the big mound of rubble. High up this slope, are some of the biggest tombs in southern Egypt. Many were found over a century ago with the help of a young Howard Carter, long before he found fame discovering Tutankhamun. But there are large parts of this site that have never been touched. So here's the River Nile here, That's which is correct. down in that direction. Yes. We're currently standing here. Right. Looking up the hill which from the Nile looks like a massive sand dune falling into the Nile. So have all these been discovered then? Yes. So these are all tombs that have already been excavated. Mm -hmm. And where's your site on this map? So this is the area we're going to work on. Martin's team will now be working a six day week to try and prove that there are undiscovered tombs here. There's your first mummy. What? Look at that. This is a mummy? Well, that's the upper part of a mummy only. Oh, extraordinary. Because the pelvis is just around your back. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. That's the pelvis. Tapping me on the shoulder. <laughs> yes. This remarkable find, a headless mummy, simply appeared this morning as the wind blew just enough sand away to reveal it. Do you think that this would originally have been in a stone tomb? Yes, but perhaps the dogs pulled it out. Is there anything that we can say about this mummified body? So what we're looking at here is just the torso. The legs are missing. It's lying on its tummy. You see the arm here. This is his arm? Exactly, yes. This seems to be the elbow. Just here, yeah. Yes, leading up to the shoulder, the shoulder. where your finger is. And it must have been burned as well, because it's rather black here. But look at the mummy bindings. They're such a good quality. Look at the quality of the linen here. That's really nicely done indeed. Such a wonderful quality. It's just great stuff. Must have been a very rich person. Am I allowed to touch it? Yes, of course. Oh, it's quite snake-like, isn't it? All <laughs> right. <laughs> and although it's, it's hard, it's not solid, you feel as though you could press mm. it in. Yeah, well, it's hollow inside. Why is that? Because they took out the internal organs, um, which were preserved separately, according to Egyptian custom. How old do you think it is? Well, I believe it's a Roman mummy. I didn't know there were such things as Roman mummies. Well, they adopted, you know. The Romans had a very strong presence here in Aswan. So this mummy is about 2,000 years old. It is. And the tombs we're looking for are about 4,500 years old. So oh. there's more time between our tombs and this mummy than there is between this mummy and us. That's correct, yes. My first mummy discovery is proof of how much waits to be discovered here just beneath the surface. Elsewhere around the dig, the finds are less grisly, but more likely to point to new tombs. The sandy slopes of Martin's dig site are littered with ancient bricks made out of mud. That is not rock, is it? It's clearly man-made. But at the end of day one, the most definite find so far the one, two, three levels, and perhaps a fourth level. Is what's running straight up the hill. Look, can you see how here this is all loose sand? Well, that's what this whole area was like at the beginning of the day. But now, since they've done all the work, can you see how hard that is, how impacted? All of this is a man-made surface. And what we think it is, is the pavement of a causeway that once went 
from here whoosh, right the way up to there. And at this City of the Dead, previous causeway discoveries have led the way to big tombs. The governors of Elephantine picked the very best spots for their tombs and built grand causeways to access them from the river. But at the top of his newly discovered causeway, Martin hasn't found a tomb, but a mysterious stone wall. What we have here now is perhaps the end of the causeway. So we want to find out more by digging deeper with the trowel. The end of the causeway should point the way to a large tomb. But excavating anything this old on such a steep slope is a dangerous operation. You cannot go too far so the whole thing doesn't crumble. Oh, yeah. The whole thing's moving. The whole thing's moving. Yeah. I really suggest you get out of the path yeah. of that. The sand is coming out from the behind. Okay. One of the giant blocks holding up the wall has shifted a good six inches. The rest of the wall hasn't budged yet, but there's a real risk it could collapse. We cannot go any further. The tombs must be behind the retention wall. We have to think very carefully whether next year or so we'll remove the wall in order to follow the causeway. But not this year. Otherwise, we risk the lives of our workmen. The hunt for tombs is rarely straightforward. And here in particular, there are risks and dangers. But luckily, Martin and the team have already found at least one new tomb. So a few days later, I'm returning to the lower part of the causeway to check on progress. Martin? Oh, hello, Tony. This has Thank come on fantastically, me. hasn't it? Yeah. What a lot of work you put in. <laughs> you can really see that it is a proper road now. Can't you? Yes, exactly. It's three metres wide and 92 metres long. And, of course, where there are causeways, there are tombs. How's that panned out? Well, just look behind you. Hey! It looks very different, right? That's come on too, isn't it? Goodness. Well, that really is an entrance. Yes, isn't it? it is. That's great. So, what's this bit here? Well, we believe this is the offering niche. Sorry, uh, offering niche is not a phrase I've ever heard before. <laughs> <laughs> well, a tomb in ancient Egypt needs to have two things in order to be operational a burial chamber and a place where the living can donate offerings to the deceased. And that's that thing here. Exactly. Have you got any idea yet how old this tomb is? Oh, we were so lucky, Tony. The offering niche I was just talking about, we found an intact pot that people left there for the deceased, untouched. Oh, about the result, contents. perfect dating evidence. Exactly. The pot dates to 2430 BC. We can date it rather precisely. So that is around about four and a half thousand years old. It's also the oldest tomb that we have found so far. It's almost a little bit older than the pyramids in Giza, so it's a pyramid age, just the beginning of it. Really, really mm. old. <laughs> so what happens here now at the big money end? Well, actually, we are looking for someone who is going to volunteer to go down that shaft and look into the burial chamber. So this is the same kind of age as the pyramid at Giza? It is indeed. And I'm going there. Yes, if you want to. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> There is something rather eerie about going into a 4,000-year-old tomb. That's true. This may be the last time you'll ever see me. Take care. Be sure that you only do what you're really comfortable with. Sure, sure. All right. Yeah. Well, the first thing that I can see is that the ground itself at the bottom of the slope appears to be hard rock. And the actual tomb is hacked out of that. 
So it's not mud brick or anything. Hold on. Uh, to my left, there's a niche, a little recess. Oh, that's good news. That's what we would expect. A space like this would have stored pots, plates and food offerings to help our owner reach the afterlife. Is there anything left there? No. Were you hoping it would be full of something? It might be the case that someone's been in there, but it doesn't mean that they went any further. All right, well, I'll go on a bit now. Can you tell me whether you're facing a corridor right now? I am. Uh, and, and does it go left or right? That's important for me to know. Well, it certainly doesn't go right. It's curving round to the left, but <coughs> there's a load of sand here. Uh, yeah, there's, there's definitely a tunnel to the left, but it's, it's completely blocked off. Perhaps the sand comes from of the hole that emerged today morning. Well, I'm no sand expert, but some of it does seem quite fresh, I must admit. Uh. I can't really go any further than this. Well, then don't, you know, you have to be safe, most of yeah. all. Yeah. Because if it's indeed connected with the hole, then even more sand would con come down on you. Yeah. But you see, the left turn would have led us to the burial chamber. So the burial chamber's there, but we just can't get at it right now. Yes, I'm afraid so. Hey, it's in the sand. I've got a bone just above it. There's some pottery. Oh, good. And just below it, there is not only some pottery, but I've got a bead. Oh, Yay! Great. I've got two beads. Oh, that's great, Tony. I, I come and join you. Okay. Just hang on. Oh, it's nicely cool down here. It is. All oh, right. Come oh. over here. There's the bone. Yeah, I'll show you the bone. Here we go. That's great. Oh. Seems to be the end of a pelvis. No. And what about the beads you were promising? Okay. Three, one. Two. Oh, look at that. Look at that. There we are. Wonderful. Oh, like little eggs, aren't they? Yeah, two round faience beads. Uh, what does faience mean? Faience, that is a certain type of quartzite made jewelry, glazed with cover that turns blue. The color Egyptian blue comes from that. And you reckon it would have been a necklace? Yes, absolutely, yeah. yes. It must have been a necklace. Well, these are expensive. And what a privilege it is to hold something so personal to our tomb's owner. Well, this clearly hasn't got all the shiny pillars and statues associated with the tomb of a governor, but it, there's a lot of work here, isn't there? Well, you know, it was probably the second man in line. He had access to a fantastic burial site, had engineers excavating out of the standing rock. This may not be the grandest tomb at the City of the Dead, but it might be one of the oldest. It could mark the moment almost four and a half thousand years ago when this important burial ground was established on Egypt's southern border. Given what we found here, what might you expect to find when you eventually do manage to shift all that sand? Well, you probably have two meters of work here, and then we might face a burial chamber that includes a sarcophagus, a wooden sarcophagus, hopefully, or perhaps two sarcophagi. We still have to solve the question of whether these beads belong to a man or a woman, or a man and a woman being buried here. Oh, I see it. But unfortunately, that work will have to wait until Martin's next digging season. Thanks. Right, here we go. One, two, three, yay! How we go? Good. Oh, well done. Clear light of day. Oh, now. wonderful! Look at this. Oh, beautiful. Yes. Well, great find. Thanks for all that. We now know where the tomb chamber is. We got our lovely find to be continued. Hopefully, see you next year. <laughs> <laughs> see you. See you, mate. Bye, Tony. Thanks for coming.